Behold, the official White House Christmas card from 1993. 1993 was the first year of the Bill Clinton presidency, and that year's Christmas card featured the president and the first lady and a Christmas tree in the state dining room. This Christmas card from 1993 was seen by Republicans in Congress at the time as a scandal, as evidence that Bill Clinton was corrupt and criminal and was guilty of abusing the office of the presidency. It was all evident right there in the Christmas card, because the way the Clinton White House addressed its Christmas cards was that they used a computer database. A database set up in the White House social office that included the names of everybody the Clintons came in contact with once the Clinton presidency started. It was a database of about 350,000 names. If you were on that list, you got a Christmas card. And although the White House social office contended that the database was only used to figure out who should get Christmas cards, congressional Republicans knew it was a scandal. They suspected something nefarious. They thought the Christmas card list was somehow corrupt criminal. It was an abuse of power. And so Republicans held hearings into the Christmas cards. Clinton administration officials were hauled before the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee to answer for this evil White House Christmas card list and explain how it was evidence of improper partisan campaign activity or something. Republicans called up 34 witnesses to give depositions about the Christmas card list. They demanded more than 40,000 documents about the Christmas card list. They held days of hearings on the Christmas card list. And, and, you know, and they accused liberals of waging a war on Christmas? Yes, despite, despite all the hearings and the depositions and all the rest of it, uh, the Republican investigations into the White House Christmas card turned up nothing. Sometimes a Christmas card really is just a Christmas card. Uh, officially, that scandal-seeking fishing expedition from the Clinton era is known as the investigation of the conversion of the $1.7 million centralized White House computer system known as the White House database and related matters. Unofficially, though, it is known as the time that House Republicans spent years investigating Bill and Hillary Clinton's Christmas card. Seriously. The guy who led that committee that investigated the Clinton Christmas card uh, was this guy. His name is Dan Burton. He was a Republican congressman from the great state of Indiana. And for years, Dan Burton's whole reason for being was to try to find a way to take down the presidency of Bill Clinton using the powers of his own office in the House. Uh, he once described President Clinton as a scumbag. He said that on the record. Uh, to give you a little taste of the Dan Burton mindset, he convinced himself that the president and the first lady, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, were not just bad people. They were killers. He decided that they murdered their deputy White House counsel, a man named Vince Foster. And to help prove it, Dan Burton went into his backyard with a gun and shot at either a watermelon or a cantaloupe, depending on who you believe, uh, in order to prove that Vince Foster's death was a Clinton hit. It was a murder and not a suicide, which he could tell uh, because of something about shooting a watermelon. We, at my house, with a homicide detective, tried to recreate a head and fired a 38 4 inch barrel into that to see if the sound could be heard from 100 yards away, even, when there was a, even though there was an earth mover moving around in the background making all kinds of racket, and you could hear the bullet clearly. So obviously, Bill Clinton is a murderer. Um, Dan Burton's committee investigated claims that the Clintons were traitors, that they were selling information to the Chinese government in exchange for money. He held hearings alleging that the Clinton administration was selling burial plots in Arlington National Cemetery in exchange for campaign contributions. He held hearings alleging that the Clinton White House was surreptitiously altering videotapes of fundraisers in order to hide some sort of wrongdoing that Dan Burton imagined was happening at the fundraisers. Dan Burton suggested at one point that he should hire lip readers to examine those tapes to find the photoshopping. During his tenure as chairman of the Government Reform and Oversight Committee, Dan Burton issued more than 1,000 subpoenas to 141 different Clintonites. In one case, Dan Burton's investigators even managed to subpoena the wrong man. Now, that one was really embarrassing. Dan Burton's committee was so busy passing out subpoenas like party favors that they accidentally subpoenaed the wrong guy by confusing two similar sounding Asian names. Yeah, that's nice. So that was the summer of subpoena. That was 1997. That was how the Republicans thought they would use control of the House to try to destroy a presidency that they did not like, as well as some watermelons.
Well, now 16 years and one Democratic president later, the Republican summer of subpoena appears to be back. The Republican who has Dan Burton's old job as chairman of the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee is now this man on your right, uh, Republican Congressman Daryl Issa of California. But if you saw this whole thing unfold the first time, the plot this time will seem familiar, even if some of the faces are changed. Some of the faces are changed. One of the latest targets of the Republicans' latest round of subpoenas in our new subpoena summer um, is Hillary Clinton's former chief of staff when she was secretary of state, a woman named Cheryl Mills. Cheryl Mills, it turns out, is no stranger to this committee that's now investigating her. Here she is in 1997 testifying before the same House committee on the great White House Christmas card scandal that was supposed to drive Bill Clinton out of office once and for all. Cheryl Mills was Bill Clinton's White House deputy counsel at the time. And now House Republicans say they would please like to talk to her again. It's going to be a long, hot, stupid summer. The summer of subpoena is back.